everybody welcome to Felicity Yarn Studio or should I say welcome back because it has been quite a while since I have sat down and recorded anything and caught up with y'all um, if you're new here my name is Zoe and I am a fiber artist and I am I've got about seven months worth of stuff to catch up on with y'all uh, both personal and fiber related before we dive into all of that, if you want to follow me on social media, if you need more information about um, show notes and what I talk about, that will be in the description box down below because uh, I can already tell you a lot of this stuff is going to be gone from my immediate memory as far as like details go. But yeah, let me go ahead and try to sum up kind of what happened over the last six or seven months. Um, without taking too much of your time and if you are not interested in the personal stuff totally understand I will leave a timestamp uh, down below so you can jump to the uh, you know typical knitting woolly content so let's rewind back to July of last year um, I was about halfway through dying advent calendars I had just uploaded a podcast after that, I kind of busted my tail to finish dyeing and packing and getting all of those out by the 1st of October or before the 1st of October, um, mainly because Naomi and I were due to take a trip to um, London and to Amsterdam and we got to meet up with our bestie Gemma, who is Gemma B Makes. Um, Naomi is also the yarn curator across the internet, so go check out both of their channels. Um, but yeah, we had an amazing trip. I tried to take some footage here and there, but honestly, I was just there to enjoy being in the moment. Um, I love London. I am a fangirl. <laughs> um, I cannot wait to go back. There will definitely be more trips in my future. Um, Amsterdam was amazing too, but um, I don't know. London like captured my heart. So that was a really nice reward to get myself through advent calendar dying season. Um, fast forward to November and Jason and I were working on getting the house ready to um, host for Thanksgiving. Uh, we hosted the year before and it kind of takes some of the stress off of holiday travel for us. But um, anyway, he got sick the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, we thought it was some kind of stomach virus at first. Um, he had a migraine uh, that just was not going away. And I don't know, after about six or seven days of him being sick, I finally drug him into the ER. And he wound up staying for about a week in the hospital um, with some crazy blood pressure, crazy high blood pressure. So that was really, really scary because he was in the ICU for a few days. He is now on the mend. Um, he is taking lots of medication to <laughs> get that blood pressure under control. So yeah, that was a really, really scary um, time. And coming home and being like a full-time caregiver while he recovered because I mean he lost a lot of strength and just was not himself for a few weeks there um, by the time he was ready to go back to work it was the holidays so we traveled back to see family um, which puts us in January and by January I was just completely burnt out that is when a lot of my um, kind of making mojo returned, um, mostly because I was getting back into my like daily routines and he was back at work and feeling more like himself. So um, yeah, that, that time period from like November to January was just a lot of doctor's appointments, filling medications, uh, learning what our new normal was gonna be like. Um, so there wasn't really a lot of time for making and creative things and that's okay. Um, I know for a lot of people that is an outlet and for me it is as well, but when I'm in the thick of it, it just did not, I don't know, I didn't have the energy for it. I didn't have the mental space for it. Um, so I just, I just didn't do anything. I didn't make anything. 
I take that back. I did whip up some Christmas hats like the week before Christmas, but that was kind of at the point when we were getting back to normal, <laughs> whatever normal is. So yeah, I spent most of January uh, recovering from burnout and just feeling exhausted. There were some other things that happened during that time period that just like life just kept hitting us in the nuts pretty hard. Um, both of our cars needed work done and I got sick over Christmas with the norovirus. So that was awesome, you know, throwing up in my mother-in-law's house. Just little stuff like that that just kept piling on. So again, when January rolled around, I really just needed time to sit and recover and rest, rest my body, rest my mind. Um, and that is when I fell down the rabbit hole of the main project that has been <laughs> absorbing my time and my energy. So I guess that's a good place for me to start. Um, it is today, March 1st of 2024. So I've been working on this kind of from like mid January. So maybe like the past six weeks or so. Um, and that is my, I, I just upset the pile of stuff that I have down here. Um, I have been working relentlessly on my Battenberg blanket, which <sighs> this is not going to look like a lot, but there's, there's context to this. This is a project that I started back in 2019 when I started this channel. Um, I love this pattern so much. I did actually make one um, last year for my niece who was born. It's actually her first birthday um, this weekend, so we're going to the party, but I made her a version of the Battenberg blanket, or rather I finished the one that I started for my nephew. <laughs> and gave it to my niece when she was born. Um, but this one is for me for um, our bed. I'm planning on making this for our king size bed. Um, so I'm pretty much insane because these squares measure about one and three quarters inches. Um, I have done the math. I need somewhere around 2000 squares total the white and the colors. And because I'm a little bit crazy and a little bit obsessive, my plan all along has been to m make, when I'm making a, a color square, I like to make four of each. So I've been storing um, the colors in four different Ziploc bags just so that um, as I'm working on it, I know that the colors are going to be relatively evenly distributed. So one, two, three, and then the ones that I'm working with are here as well as in another bag. So I'll get to this in a second. At last count, I am... I need about 230 in each quarter. So whatever 230 times four is, is the total that I need for the color squares for the blanket. Um, I have approximately just over 200 um, with the last count that I did. And I need to add some to this bag. I left them on the couch downstairs. So yeah, I have about 800, 900, tiny little color squares floating around right now. <laughs> and if you're unfamiliar with the Battenberg blanket, um, when you crochet the white squares, you join them as you go. So you make the square and then you like crochet around and I would add another one here or, um, you know, wherever it's missing one. So white square would go here and then I'd attach the next color block onto it. Now I mentioned that I started this back in 2019 and when I did, um, I had actually stopped when it was like an eight by eight square or panel. And I was kind of at the time thinking about doing like panels that size and then joining them, but I've just kind of decided to, to just, just go with it. Um, I did actually take apart some of that original panel just because 
Uh, I wasn't loving like four or five of the color squares that I had in there, so I took them out. Um, it was actually really easy to reattach the white squares because I already had like the tail measured out that I needed for the extra joining around the perimeter, which means now I can make the white squares and kind of hoard up a stash of those um, and kind of have a good joining session every once in a while. <laughs> um, since I know approximately how long I need the tail to be. Um, so it's kind of moving a little bit quicker now that I have kind of some of that information. This means that I only need about 120 more color squares, which 120 divided by four would be about 30 new colors or squares made in a quantity of four. I assume my math makes sense. It makes sense to me. Um, again, just I'm just doing that so that I can feel like the colors are going to be fairly evenly distributed. I'm not worried about like overly obsessing over how they get arranged. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of going along. I'll usually pull like three or four color squares and um, kind of arrange them and decide which ones are playing nicely together and go from there. So I am willing to be a little bit flexible on which ones get used, which ones don't get used. Some of them might get booted. I might wind up making a few more once I get to the end of this first like quarter of the blanket and really decide how I want to, um, which colors I want to use and whatnot. So back to this thingajig. This, if you've never seen one before, is a crochet square blocker tool. Um, I found this on Amazon and I'm kicking myself for not purchasing one of these sooner <laughs> uh, because these squares would have really benefited from a proper um, block. Let me pull out one. So the square hasn't been blocked. It's kind of, you know, curling and doesn't really lay super flat. Um, but if you compare it to this one, uh, the blocked squares are just so much easier to work with. It is a lot easier to get along these like edge stitches from when you're joining the squares. It's a pretty handy tool. Um, like I said, I wish I had bought one sooner. I found it on Amazon. I don't remember if I just said that or not. I'm I'm rusty, y'all. This this is going to be quite the ride. <laughs> and I kind of tried to like organize them a little bit by color um just so I could see what I'm working with. Um again, I have this is about half of what I have left to join for the first quarter. The other half are downstairs in their own little baggie. Um, I have been weaving in all of my ends as I go for the most part. Uh, there was a batch or two in here that did not get woven in, but um, yeah, I have quite a pile of ends accumulating as well, and I do have plans for those. I'm gonna save that for another day. Battenbark is coming along. I have had some serious hyper focus on this project um, as of the last like six weeks or so and I am highly motivated to keep making progress on it right now so that is what I anticipate keeping my attention um, until it doesn't and then who knows it may go back into hibernation for another five years <laughs> probably not I I think part of the motivation is we actually got a new bed for Christmas, a new bed frame, new mattress, all the all the bells and whistles. We also um, have plans to get the bedroom painted and some furniture that I want to paint um, to get our bedroom actually decorated and like nice and homey looking. <laughs> so I think that's where my motivation is coming from. I'd really like to have um, this quilt blanket uh, ready for our bed when the time comes. All right, so again, the Battenberg has been the bulk of my uh, making over the last six weeks. Um, but in the meantime, I did actually start a garment. 
it has not gone far. <laughs> um, I started the Albar pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, and this is as far as I've gotten, which is the back panel. Let me make sure. Yeah, that's the correct, the right side. So it is an all over, I guess you would call it a um, Gansey style uh, sweatshirt, not sweatshirt, pullover, where you're doing patterns with knits and pearls um, to get these different textures and patterns. So I was really enjoying this when I started it. Not to say that I'm not enjoying it now, just that popped out and captured my attention. Um, this is like the first panel The it's actually the back panel. Um, and then you make, you attach the front and the front, I think, and then join it and then eventually join it and work it in the round and do the sleeves. It's kind of a drop shoulder sleeve design. Um, so I don't know. I was scrolling Ravelry, um, around my birthday, which is like mid January and I decided that I did want to start another garment and I do, I do. <laughs> I just want to do everything right now or since kind of getting my energy and my mojo back. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place, but also kind of sucked into one thing. So it's a weird place to be creatively. I went shopping with some birthday money and I actually wound up on webs and I bought some of their like house yarn called Valley Yarns. And this is 60% merino, 20% silk and 20% yak. It is a DK weight yarn. Um, these are 50 gram little balls. So there's 120 yards in each um, little cake here. And I went with a basic kind of neutral gray. Um, it's actually the same fiber content as what the pattern was designed in. Um, I kind of wanted to stick with that same fiber content so it would have a little bit of drape. At first I was thinking 100% wool, but I was thinking it might be a little too kind of stiff and like boxy. Um, I really wanted something that was going to be soft and a little bit squishy and lovable. So this was my little birthday treat to myself. And again, I kind of blew through this in the first like week or so when I cast this on. Um, but then the, the crochet squares happened. Battenberg happened. <laughs> um, so I really want to get back into this. Um, I need to kind of take a look at what the next steps are in the pattern. Um, I have no complaints about the pattern other than I wish that designers would put the key next to the chart on in the PDF. That's all I want. I don't want to have to scroll back six pages to look at the key and then go back to the chart that I need. I don't think that's too much to ask. That being said, I know I can do it myself. I can move it. I know I have the skills. Not everyone has those skills. Minor tangent over. <laughs> so again, this is the Alvar pullover by Sari Nordlin. Um, yeah, we'll see. It'll get done when it gets done. I didn't really mean to do whips before finished objects, but Battenberg kind of that is dictating my life at the moment. Um, so really the only other whip that I wanted to share with you guys is um, a muscle bar hat that I have been kind of working on since I finished advent calendar dyeing because this was the full size skein um, that I dyed for the kits this year. Um, it's a lovely, lovely light dove gray with speckles of um, like purple and teal and there's some gold and peach in there. And as the kit was um, the dressmaker's advent kit this year, um, this the dress that inspired this colorway is just absolutely gorgeous. This beautiful, um, again, light gray. And it's got this print of like butterflies and moths and garden kind of scenery on in the fabric, woven into the fabric. Um, so I just absolutely loved it. I do wish that my base color had come out a little bit more like blue gray versus kind of this like silvery gray, um, but it's okay. 
I think it is knitting up quite beautifully. This was the only knitting that I took on our trip. So it was a lot of like airport knitting and I did a few rows on the train. Um, no real big hurry or push to finish this because I'm kind of at the point where I'm a little bit over it. Um, I feel like I always get to this point at a muscle burrow where I'm like, I really only need a few more inches before I can start decreasing uh, and I just flame out. You'll, you'll notice a theme here of flaming out on some of these projects. So since it's like double knit, I do like mine a little bit longer so I can make like a folded over brim. Uh, yeah, I feel like I need at least another like three to four inches before I start making those decreases. It'll get done when it gets done. It is the perfect car knitting. I just kind of keep it in the truck for when I am the passenger princess and <laughs> I can get a few rows in here and there. Like I said, we'll be traveling back for Tiana's birthday party this weekend and that will probably be my road knitting if I don't take uh, some yarn to make more squares with me. We'll see. So let's move on to finished objects and this one will kind of bookend with the muscle burrow here because um, before our trip, when I was cramming anything and everything into my life, I decided to whip up a sample knit from the advent kit that I dyed this year. So this is the Melting Marl Shawl by Stephen West of West Knits. I have knit another one of these and I knew it would knit up quickly and easily. It is some of my favorite knitting in that it is just kind of mindless garter back and forth. The rows get super long. I don't, I don't hate a super long row. I know I'm a weirdo. I did my best to design a fade this year. Um, this was the MCN base that I dyed up. Ooh, I got a little end poking out. Um, but yeah, it started with these really lovely light lavenders into purples and greens down to some, kind of some yellows and peachy mauvey tones at the bottom. It's a little pastel rainbowy, which was not my intention, but I am not mad at it at all. Um, so I should have some good footage of Naomi modeling this um, while we were in Amsterdam on our last day or so. Uh, yeah, I I love this shawl. I, I love how it turned out. Um, I think it is super pretty. I love how these kits turned out this year. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna intentionally dye fades <laughs> in the future because that's that's pretty challenging, uh, not gonna lie. Each colorway was inspired by a specific gown and I apologize for not keeping up with posting um, where the inspiration came from. I got about halfway through. I put them all on Instagram this year. Um, I will do my best to get those up um, before I publish this video. We'll see, no promises. Um, <laughs> I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Um, the shawl is held with fingering weight, held double um, to get a DK weight gauge. Um, so I started with just one color held double up at the top here and then about halfway through I worked in, started working in the second color. When the first color ran out then I'd add the third color and so on and so forth. So they were never like two colors being changed at the same time. So it kind of helped um, marl that fade in nicely. So. Yeah, this was um, a really fun, quick knit. Um, it was about all that I could mentally handle um, before going on the trip. Uh, I say that, but I did whip out two other things or finish two other things. Again, my my mind and the like processing of the timeline from the last six or seven months is just, some things are clear as day, other things are like a blur, so yeah. Oh, the last thing that I wanted to mention is um, I have had some requests to do a re-dye of this kit, 
So I am planning on doing that. I had wanted to do it um, around January and February, but clearly that did not happen. Um, I'll, it'll be a relatively small run. Like I'll probably do a total of 20 kits. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to include the full size skeins in those. It won't have any extras. It'll literally just be like the 24 mini skeins. I don't know. I may do the full size ones. We'll see. <laughs> um, but I'll probably do a few on MCN and then the rest just on sock, even though everyone did seem to love the DK weight base as well this year. There's just some nuances to dyeing. It'll be easier if I keep them all on these two bases. So um, I will, again, probably make a post on Instagram about when the kits will go up for pre-order. And like I said, I'll try to get them out um, as quickly as possible. It should move a whole lot faster than dyeing up uh, four times as many of them for the Christmas season. And as of right now, I have no clue what I'm going to be doing for 2024 Advent dyeing. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I'm open to some ideas. So if you have any like themes or ideas, uh, suggestions, drop them in the comment box down below. Let me know what you guys think. So I mentioned that I did um, kind of get a little overly ambitious and decide to whip out two additional sweaters to take <laughs> on the trip with us. I did actually talk about both of these on my last episode way back when, um, but this is the Basic Raglan Pullover by Jessie Mae Martinson. It is exactly that. It is a basic DK weight um, sweater jumper. This one has already has quite a lot of pills because I have been wearing this a lot this um, fall and winter. And it is in Knit Up and Yarn by U2 Yarns. I picked this up at SAF three years, two or three years ago. I did pick up more yarn from them this year at SAF. Um, it did not have a colorway name, just kind of like a dye, dye lot batch number, but it's a really beautifully dyed up yarn um, that is kind of like this greeny gray with like blues and peaches. Um, I don't know. I really, really loved it. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, the first day that we met up with Gemma, I was wearing this. Naomi had on green and Gemma had on her shifty, which is also <laughs> green. We were the green green club um, that day. So yeah, that was that was really funny. Um, yeah, so I did follow just about everything from this pattern. I did the tubular bind off and or cast on and bind off on the sleeves and the neckline, um, even on the bottom here. So yeah, I really I'm a fan of how the tubular bind off looks and um, I think it's a nice little detail. I talked ad nauseum about the increases and how the little like wonky flappy thing was happening right here. Honestly, it doesn't bother me now that I wear the jumper. I don't know what my problem was back then, <laughs> but yeah, I really, really love this. Um, it is a wee bit cropped. I would have liked maybe another inch or two of length, um, but that's because I was working um, with five skeins of DK yarn and that was all they had in that. So if I had had the capability to purchase a sixth skein to make this, I definitely would have. Um, but yeah, I did alternate skeins as well using the helical method. Um, and I think it worked out pretty nice. There's not a lot of like pooling or anything like that. So I love basic DK weight sweaters like that. That's what I wear around the house. That's what I throw on to go out. I've worn the crap out of the other one that I have made that was a hohi pattern and it's a lot more kind of oversized fitting. That was kind of what made me realize that I wanted to make the DK weight um, Alvar pullover. Um, I just really like the kind of weight of a DK weight sweater. I feel like they hold up um, slightly better than fingering weight sweaters can. That being said, 
<laughs> um, the next finished thing that I have to share with you guys is my great gingham sweater, which again, I was kind of busting my tail to finish in time to wear on our trip. And I did, I wore it one of the days in Amsterdam. I was actually quite warm through most of our London days. Um, but this is another Jessie Mae Martinson pattern. I apologize, I don't remember what size I made. Um, I used some hand spun yarn and some yarn that I dyed up on this MCN base. Um, so this is yarn that I spun. Originally I spun that for my laurel jumper and I wound up not using this combination. Um, I went with something completely different. Um, but I really love how the hand spun just has kind of those subtle color changes. Um, it, the pattern is written with spin cycle yarn, which again is kind of, um, it's a commercially produced yarn, but it mimics that hand spun, fractal spun quality. I did not intentionally do this as a fractal spun yarn. Um, I just, I just did whatever. I don't even remember how I spun this. <laughs> it is a targy bamboo silk blend, I believe, but this was a lot of fun to knit. When you knit it, um, you knit the sleeves first, and that is kind of supposed to give you your gauge. Um, you don't really have to do a gauge swatch if you're knitting the sleeves first. So based off of that information, when I started the body, um, I'm okay with the top part being more fitted. That was kind of what I was going for. But um, the bottom, it's a little too cropped. This one is too cropped. Um, my other sweater is cropped as well, but I don't mind that one as much. It's a little bit longer. Um, this one I need like maybe one or two more pattern repeats, I feel like, um, for it to be something that I'm gonna wear more on the regular. Um, the other thing is it is a pattern that was written for sport weight yarn and mine are definitely more of like a fingering weight yarn. So I think that did affect kind of my gauge and um, the tightness of this. Um, I'm gonna try it. I'm pretty sure there's footage of me <laughs> wearing this. If not, I'll try to take some at some point and pop it in the video here as well. And if I remember correctly, okay, yeah, you do the sleeves, you knit the bottom up, and then you join everything and do raglan decreases up to get to the top here. So in an ideal world, I would actually pick out this hem and add another repeat or two of of the gingham pattern which is a really fun thing to knit it's actually very engaging and you're kind of you kind of always know where you're at um it's very easy to memorize we'll see i don't know <laughs> i don't know i need to try it back on again i haven't worn it in a few months i need to try it back on and see my feelings on this but it it could really do with another few inches um of the pattern here so other than that i really enjoyed it i enjoyed knitting it um, I am really love this yarn combination, color combination. It's very soft and kind of drapey as well. Um, there is the inside of all of my flutes. So yeah, um, that is not it. I have one more finished object that I actually sat down and, well, I take that back. I have this and then I have something else that I'm gonna share. You guys asked, I did a poll on Instagram. I asked, do you want me to sit down and one do really, 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 really long episode? And that that's what this is gonna be. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot left to get through. This is another big project that um, probably towards the end of December, this is what I worked on from like New Year's to my birthday. Um, <clears throat> This is the giant garter blanket that I started, I don't know, maybe about two years ago at this point. And again, this was another thing that kind of got about halfway through and then sat in hibernation for a while. Um, this thing is massive. It is, I haven't measured it, but it is bigger than like your typical 50 by 60 
um, kind of like couch throw, which is okay. I wanted something a little bit bigger. It would probably fit nicely on this um, twin size bed back here. I used about 14 to 16 um, skeins of yarn total um, fingering weight and I held them double and I kind of did a marly kind of fade and I did not follow a pattern or anything. I just very loosely based this off of like the grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern where you have like a three or four stitch kind of border and then you're using yarn overs to make the increases. Um, the only kind of thing that I deviated from was instead of you make it like a V instead of making a square, um, I eventually you like increase out like this and then like close up to make a rectangle shape. I've tried to explain this in the past and I always feel like I'm just making like verbal diarrhea whenever I try to explain it. So um, it's, it's a really simple concept. You just increase along one side and decrease along the other side instead of increasing along both sides. So it grows up this way and then you decrease along both sides to close it up. I said at one point that I was going to go through everything, um, all of the yarns. I do have the tags somewhere. Um, I will try really quickly, but I apologize because I'm not going to be able to remember everything. So I started on the blue corner. Um, that was with some hedgehog and some stranded dye works held together. We moved into some toad hollow yarn um, and held with, then toad hollow held with, mm, it was yarn I got in Moorhead City. I can't remember the dyer's name right off the top of my head, but that is kind of a like local North Carolina yarn. Then the like orangey green speckles that is from Chink Fibers um, into, I think more Toad Hollow is the kind of yellowy blue, then into some yarn from Susie of Elderflower Stitches. Some of the peach is Nora George yarn. Um, somebody else. I think there's another Ching Fiber scheme in here as well. Oh no, I know there is. That's that one. Um, no, who is this? I don't remember. I don't know, but I loved all of these. Um, Ching fiber into oh, this is where my mind is like blinking. Oh, this was um, Olan yarns with like the kind of darker speckles here, and then a mini at the end, and I don't remember where the mini came from. Um, I think that's everything. I think I've, this might have been another Toad Hollow yarns um, with kind of the colorful speckles in the peach, but the beautiful thing about this blanket is that most of these skeins were gifts from people from exchanges or from other like knitty friends. Um, so it's really just a big blanket of love. Um, it's again DK weight because it's fingering weight held double so it has a nice weight to it when I'm laying on the couch. Um, a lot of times I have to double up my blankets. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> to keep my feet warm. But this one is perfect. I really, really love it. Um, again, when I pulled it out, I was making the decreases. Um, so it really, I thought it was going to wrap up quicker than it actually did. Um, but I'm okay with that. I really, that was what I needed after the holidays. Um, really to kind of slow myself down was just to sit down, do some garter stitch back and forth, just play with yarn color and, um, you know, working out what's going to fade into where. Part of me wishes that I was a little bit fussier and that I, some of these fades were a little bit more, um, gentle, that they kind of faded a little bit nicer into each other. Like that one is pretty jarring, but I really don't care. <laughs> 
I really, really don't. Um, the only thing that's kind of been a bummer is uh, the cats love this. That's not the bummer part. Um, it's the fact that Oliver loves to come and make biscuits on it. And because they are nice fingering weight yarns, even though they're held double, he tends to like pick and make little snags in the yarn. So I've been kind of constantly trying to fix them and uh, keep them from getting too bad. They're not horrible, but you know what? That is life with cats. It's just yarn. There's always gonna be more yarn. Like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not getting fussed about it. I want them to enjoy it as well. That is it for finished objects that I actually have here with me to show you guys. Um, I think I mentioned at some point or another that I did without some Christmas projects um, like a week or two before Christmas and those were basically just some muscle bar hats for my nieces. Um, again I don't have them here. I do have the remnants of some of the yarn though um, but I made this one. I made one for Lily out of um, this sparkle base. I'm not usually a sparkle knitter. I don't really dye the sparkle yarn often either. Um, I had dyed up some of this kind of ice queen colorway I don't know, two or three years ago, it was kind of a one-off in the shop. So I had kind of that skein laying around and that was the one that she picked from my stash. And then my niece Olivia, she's like my color soulmate. Um, she picked this color from my stash. Uh, this was from Spectrum Fibers. I don't remember the colorway name. I may have the label still, I may not. Um, but she, she is a like teal, mint, uh, bright aqua colors are kind of her her thing so um yeah I made them each a hat and then I made um the babies a hats as well out of some purple yarn that was kind of a oopsie in my dye pot <laughs> um they're really pretty and I have some on 50 gram skeins that I need to get listed up but they're just kind of a one of one of a kind oopsie color way that I whipped out the little baby girl hats um, real quick with. So there's pictures of that. You, you guys know how the auntie life is. Um, I, I can't say no when they request something specific like that, even if it is less than two weeks <laughs> before Christmas. Um, so those definitely had to get made. I guess I should include this one as a whip. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned up at the top. I've been kind of Part of my mojo coming back has been exploring new things, um, trying out new crafts and whatnot. So I bought this needle felting kit, um, I don't know, two or three safts ago <laughs> um, from Blue Sky Fiber. I got the like cherry blossom kit. We have a lot of cherry blossoms and dogwoods in our yard that bloom every spring. So I thought it was time to get this thing made and get it put up on my wall. Um, I have a little circle collage, <laughs> that's what I call it, um, with plates and other like circular, uh, like things and hoops and whatnot in my living room. Anyway, so I started this and this is as far as I've gotten. I'm about, I don't know, I'd say about two thirds of the way there. Um, I have two more sets of trees to make, so four more trees. Um, I think I'm a little bit heavy handed with my, um, wool application. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't have to be an exact, it's never going to be an exact replica of what they have on, um, the box here and in their instructions. Um, and I kind of feel like as I was going along, uh, some things were not really like forming into the right shape that I wanted. So I kind of would go over it two or three times with a couple layers of the wool. Um, like I feel like the trees are really thick. Compared to how kind of like thin and wispy some of those layers look, um, like the, the, the pink that makes the flowers of the tree versus mine, which are just kind of thick and lumpy. <laughs> Um, I may still be able to go over them and do kind of a lighter layer to get that effect. But otherwise, I mean, it's still pretty. It is what it is. It's my first time needle felting. I'm trying really hard not to be too critical of myself here. 
but this kit does come with everything that you need um, minus the foam block I had to purchase that separately um, but yeah there's all the colors in there and it does come with two needles they're only single needles so it is kind of taxing on like my forearm um, I found that I would spend about an hour, an hour and a half at a time um, working on this before I was kind of like, all right, I'm over this for the day. So I really feel like I only have, I don't know, one or two kind of hour and a half long sessions left to finish this thing. Um, and I really just need to sit down and finish it one day. But again, I am the queen of getting halfway to three quarters of the way done with something and then putting it aside until, I don't know, until I find the motivation to get started on something new. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I need to stop being so hard on myself. I think it is going to be really cute. It might not be quite as realistic looking. It's kind of more like like a kid drawing stick figures <laughs> if that makes sense but again it's my first time I don't think it's a bad attempt for my first attempt at needle felting I guess that kind of transitions me to acquisitions um and I'm not gonna dwell on this for a whole long time because I haven't really done anything with it yet but my mom has loaned me her uh loom which is an Ashford loom I don't even know how big it is or what it is um <laughs> She's not been using it and I I do want to learn how to weave and get some use out of that. I think that is going to be a really good use of some of my hand spun yarn that has just been hanging around for years now. That's something that I need to sit down and learn about, warp up, practice on. So if you have any good um, like weaving videos or tutorials, uh, I would love for you to drop that in the comments down below as well or any kind of good books. Um, cause again, that's, that's a rabbit hole that I can see myself falling down here soon. That reminds me, I did not even bring up the spinning that I've completed. I'm going to save that for next time. I guess I could have talked about this as a whip. So when Naomi and I were in London, we visited Loop, which is this really cute little yarn shop. I forget which neighborhood it's in. Um, and this is not like local or special or anything like that. I mean, it is special, but um, I saw this shawl in the shop and I just kind of fell in love with it. And it's just a single strand of mohair, stockinette stitch back and forth. Um, and you use one, two, five or six colors of mohair for it. So I'm, I started with the gray. I believe it's five. So this is the Ito Sensei yarn, and these are the colors that I picked. Um, I don't remember the name of the pattern off the top of my head, but I'll put um, the picture up on the screen here. So obviously once we got back, I couldn't resist just casting it on because it's just stocking it back and forth on like size four needles or something um, to make this nice gauzy lightweight scarf. I'm not really a scarf wearer. I don't really know when or where I would be wearing this scarf slash, it's almost kind of like a stole wrap size, but whatever, I'll have it, it'll be made. I really loved the finished object in the shop, so that was kind of what sold me on this purchase. And I'll always have the memories of London attached to that yarn. I guess that's kind of a whip as well, but I was waiting to get a little bit further into it before I shared it as part of a whip. All right, so moving along, this is kind of a dual acquisition thing. Um, when I went to SAF this year, I just kind of popped up on my own. I just drove myself up there on the Friday. Um, I knew that I wanted to purchase a fleece did purchase a few other things that I'll show you guys in a second um, but I purchased this CVM it's a cross between CVM and something else I can't remember off the top of my head but I did take a picture of the label um, so I'll pop it up on the screen but it's this lovely um, chocolatey brown natural colored fleece I 
have washed it um, and I started kind of picking through it after I washed it right away and I got through about a quarter of it when I decided this is for the birds I need some processing tools um, in order to make this go by faster what I didn't realize at the time is that I might have bought something that has a pretty short staple length again this is the first fleece that I've ever purchased um, so it's it's not the longest um, and when I've been so that's kind of what I'm working with here and when I've been um, combing it out I'm getting very short sections of fiber so what I did the tools that I purchased I went to my friend Gemma's shop. She has been 3D printing some tools for fiber processing. So I did get the comb set and the hackle. Um, I'm waiting on a Diz to come in before I try playing with the hackle any, but I did start playing with the combs and they just very nicely uh, slot in and they are very well made. So kudos to you, Gemma, on figuring out the process for making those. Um, but I did start combing out some little floof balls. So this is what I was coming up with after the fact. So this is kind of, I don't know. I don't know if this is normal. Um, I, I wasn't really able to like get it into like a long strip of roving. Again, I'm waiting on a Diz to come in. So I don't know if that will help. Um, with pulling the fiber off of the tools, but I did try spinning up a sample the other night and it was very fussy to spin with because of the short stable length. Um, I also have a blending board, so I may try putting it on there to get kind of like a bat to spin from versus trying to comb it all in the same direction um, with it being such short staple length. Uh, the other thing that I may explore, I may try blending it with another fiber or another wool, another breed, something that is longer um, to make spinning a little bit more enjoyable. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, although Gemma and I have talked about doing a shawl to sheep um, kind of little fun challenge. <laughs> so I need to really figure out what I'm going to do with this fleece, um, how I want to make it more enjoyable to spin and to work with. Um, it's going to take a little playing around with a little bit more. So yeah, um, again, I'm not experienced at buying fleeces. So maybe if I buy another one in the future, um, I'll know better what to look for. So the only thing that I'm not sure about is with potentially blending this with something else is currently everything in my stash is all fleece or fiber that's been processed or at least like made into a bat or roving or whatever. So I don't know how that would work if I want to like run it all through the hackles or the blending board to make it into a new spinnable fiber. I mean, I assume it's not a problem. I don't know um, if you're a more experienced spinner slash fiber, fiberist, <laughs> let me know, um, you know, if there's any pitfalls to that. I don't know why there would be. I am very much a trial by error type of um, learner and doer, <laughs> so we'll see. Well, since that was my sack purchase, I'll go ahead and show the other two things that I purchased. Um, this is a mini set from Apothecary, one of my favorite dyers. Um, I, I don't think I've actually bought any of her yarn. I always buy her fiber. Um, and these are 80% merino, 20% silk. And I didn't realize at the time that that was what I purchased because I would have used these um, in one of the blankets that I am making. Um, so given that they have the silk content, I think I'm going to save them for something a little bit more special, either a hat or a cowl. I'm not really a cowl person, but I think this could make a really pretty shifty 
or um, whatever the shift cowl <laughs> is, uh, the, the minis could be a really pretty use of that. Or again, some kind of hat. I don't know. I, I'm going to live with these for a while before I decide what to make out of them. And then again, I went back to U2 Yarns. This is their label. And this is their Mellow Fingering Weight Base. And this just says it was their Saf 2023 Dark Colorway. So it's this really pretty, um, it's somewhere between an olive and a forest green. And there's kind of some nice speckles happening there. So I'm kind of thinking a cardigan with these. I don't know which pattern yet, but I do know that I need more cardigans in my life. Um, so that is probably what this will become down the road. And then while we were in Amsterdam, of course, we had to go visit um, Stephen and Penelope, Stephen West shop. Um, so I purchased some of his bicycle wool and I don't know if this has a couple way. I think it's Marinery? Marinery. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, marine blue, I assume, is kind of what that is supposed to be. It's a very dark um, navy with kind of some purpley undertones. It's very pretty. Um, and then I also picked up this Schopel Zauber Ball. Um, again, they kind of complemented each other. So again, the shift shawl crossed my mind, um, possibly some other kind of shawl. This is very light and not scratchy at all um, for 100% wool. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to make. I have another uh, Zauber Ball that is kind of like the opposite of this. It's like a light lavender with... Um, like a chartreuse green and grays that could also play um, nicely with this. So they'll just sit in my stash until I'm ready to figure out what to make with these uh, souvenir yarns as well. And then I think this is the last little bit that I have for today. I have no idea how long I've been rambling on at this point. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned in the past that um, our parents do RV trips across the country, or they did. They have sold the RV since and are downgrading a bit. Um, but they did the like Pacific Northwest um, and then across through like Michigan last fall, last like late summer through fall. And um, my mom picked me up some fiber. Um, I'm not sure what shop this came from, but I want to say it was somewhere in Oregon. It is 50% merino, 50% tensile um, by BJS Fiber Creations. Yeah, that's all I got. Um, so it's this really pretty, um, what color would I call this? Kind of like aubergine, mauvey, purpley pink color um, with some grays in there. So I have no idea what I will spin with this. It's going to be very silky and very drapey. It's very soft. I don't know. I might need to go ahead and throw this on my wheel because I want to spin some more. I just need a palette cleanser spin at this point. This might be it. It might be something different to work with. Um, yeah, I don't know. This would make a really pretty shawl, I think. So that might be something that I dip my toes into here soon. Ooh, or I wonder if that would make a good weaving yarn. Let me know. Let me know what y'all think. Um, I know actually tinsel can also be used as a strengthener for like a sock yarn for more of a natural um, sock yarn that doesn't use nylons if you're trying to stay away from the microplastics that is a good option as well oh here we go aha I believe the shop is called you and I and it is from Chehalis Washington 
if you're ever out in that neck of the woods, go check them out. I know she sent us, she was texting me and Naomi at the same time, um, lots of pictures and options available, and it seemed like they had a lot of spinning fiber there, so. All right, um, yeah, I think that does it. I think I am talked out. <laughs> like I said, I have things that I have not shared um, because this is just a lot going on, and um, it's like my granny stripe blanket. I just want there to be more progress before I pull that out. Um, there's a sock that I'm hoping to finish here shortly. And oh yeah, there's a whole spinning project that I haven't even pulled up here. I don't know, there's more and it is just everywhere. I'm trying to finish a few things while still indulging in my Battenberg obsession right now. <laughs> so there's also a lot of yarn dyeing that I'm really itching to get to. Um, I have like four or five colorways brewing in the back of my mind that are waiting to get out, um, as well as redying the advent calendar kits. Um, so again, I will post on Instagram when I am gonna put all that, get all that going. <laughs> um, I have lots of yarn that I just need to list in the shop as well. It's just been one thing at a time, one day at a time. I want to do everything I am getting that energy back so I'm trying to pace myself and keep myself from burning out again um, we're getting there <laughs> it's been good the last two or three months have been good we've been settling back into normalcy um, getting back into the gym regularly has been great for my mind and for my body um, yeah so We've got a whole nother round of doctor's appointments in March. <sighs> Take care of yourselves, y'all. Um, listen to your bodies. That's what I learned from our whole big ordeal. Uh, if, if it doesn't seem right, it's probably not right. Um, if you have a headache that lasts for more than like four days, go get it checked out. Um, check your blood pressure. They call it the silent killer for a reason. So that's my little PSA um, announcement for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, comment. Like, y'all know I don't do Patreon or anything like that. I'm just here to share what I've been making um, and to get some feedback from y'all. I, I really enjoy and appreciate um, spending time blethering here with you. So, all right. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.